I knew it. The world watched as SpaceX successfully caught rockets with its innovative Mechazilla arm, an impressive feat that even caught China's attention. True to form, China is eager to replicate this technology. But copying isn't always easy, especially when past attempts at mimicking cutting-edge tech have often fallen short. So how exactly is China attempting to copy SpaceX's catch technology? And why can't they match SpaceX's success? Let's dive into this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. On October 13th, SpaceX captured global attention with the groundbreaking success of Flight 5, a mission that showcased a bold advancement in rocket recovery technology. The highlight of this flight? Super Heavy Booster 12's unprecedented landing, safely caught by the Mechazilla chopstick arm. A maneuver that's poised to reshape the landscape of reusability in spaceflight. The success of this catch introduces a level of precision and efficiency that stands to revolutionize launch operations, enabling fast turnarounds and paving the way for significant cost reductions. With this technology now in play, ambitious targets like lunar and Martian missions are no longer distant dreams. They're firmly within reach. China, fully aware of the impact this leap could have on the space industry, has wasted no time in responding. Rather than crafting an original approach, China has taken a direct cue from SpaceX's methodology, opting to replicate the rocket-catching system. Back in July, a series of images began circulating, unveiling Cosmoleap's plans to develop a similar system for rocket recovery. Musk himself acknowledged the uncanny resemblance between Cosmoleap's design and SpaceX's with the simple remark, look familiar. Initially, China seemed hesitant to move forward aggressively with the concept, likely because even SpaceX had yet to demonstrate the viability of the system. But the success of Flight 5 has undoubtedly shifted perspectives. Within weeks of SpaceX's milestone, Cosmoleap announced on November 1st that it had secured over $14 million, or roughly 100 million yuan, to fund the development of Yue Qian, a reusable rocket program that prominently features its own version of the catch system. This substantial funding round was led by a coalition of investors, including Shenang Cheng Yi, Tian Chuang Capital, Boyan Fund, Xiang Feng Chang Ching, and notable investor Zhang Chao, underscoring the level of commitment to advancing China's own reusable rocket capabilities. This marks a significant leap forward for Cosmo Leap, also known as Da Hang Yue Qian, especially considering the company was only founded in March of this year. Their goal is to develop a low-cost, highly reliable, reusable launch vehicle, an achievement currently mastered only by SpaceX. According to Cosmoleap's statement, the company has already made several technical breakthroughs. These include constructing a chopstick clip recovery tower verification platform, developing an onboard flight control computer called Firestone No. 1, and creating the first domestic recovery tower controller, Little Firestone. This latest round of financing will go toward testing the chopstick clip tower and advancing the Yue Qian launch vehicle. Cosmoleap recently shared a video showcasing their system, which bears a strong resemblance to SpaceX's Starship technology. The video also revealed the company's ambition to build its launch tower on an offshore platform. Cosmoleap is targeting a test flight for its Yue Qian, or LEAP, rocket around 2025 or 2026, with plans outlined by a company representative at the International Astronautical Congress in October of 2024. In the video, striking similarities to SpaceX's systems are clear. The tower structure appears to be built from steel bars, likely divided into modules like SpaceX's launch tower. The chopstick arm closely resembles Starship's Mechazilla arm. The Yue Qian launch vehicle itself mirrors the design of SpaceX's Falcon 9, featuring a 75 meter height and a 4 meter diameter, slightly larger than the Falcon 9. The specifications reveal additional likeness. Yue Qian uses a grid fin navigation system, an octagonal configuration of 9 engines, and a methane based fuel system, all hallmarks of SpaceX designs. Capable of lifting 10.45 tons to a 1,000 kilometer orbit in expendable mode or 6.28 tons in reusable mode, Yue Qian closely matches Falcon 9's capabilities. Like Starship, it is designed to land on the tower without landing legs. 
Future plans include a 126-meter version of the rocket expected to launch by 2030 with a capacity of 100 tons to orbit in expendable mode and 36 tons if reusable. These are indeed ambitious plans that Cosmoleap has set in motion. However, this path of development may lack long-term viability. While they've managed to replicate the appearance of SpaceX's designs, the core technology is far harder to duplicate. If it were simple, we'd likely see many SpaceX equivalents globally. But as of now, SpaceX remains singular, driven by Elon Musk's relentless vision. With such unsustainable progress, I predict Cosmoleap may face early setbacks. If their technological infrastructure can't match their ambitious design, investors might soon lose confidence leading to an eventual collapse of the project. If you agree with this outlook, comment great script, Kevin, to let us know. And if you'd like, paint your own scenario for Cosmoleap's future. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's exciting journey forward. My views stem from a history of Chinese companies attempting to emulate SpaceX's approach, only to encounter repeated setbacks. Beyond Cosmoleap, other Chinese companies like Landspace, Galactic Energy, Space Pioneer, Deep Blue Aerospace, and CAS Space have all drawn heavily from SpaceX's methods and aesthetics. However, few have found sustainable success. Landspace stands as a rare success with its Yuchui 3, marking the first methane powered rocket to reach orbit. Yet, as more companies aim to replicate SpaceX's innovations, failure remains a common outcome. A recent high-profile example is Deep Blue Aerospace's unsuccessful test of the Nebula 1 rocket in September. Although the rocket launched, it encountered engine issues during landing, resulting in a hard collision with the pad and severe damage to its aft section. Deep Blue Aerospace had intended to produce reusable rockets akin to SpaceX to drive down costs and improve operational efficiency. But the recent failure dealt a blow to that vision, and they appear to be pivoting. Their latest update indicates a shift toward launching a suborbital capsule, a model seemingly influenced by SpaceX's Dragon and Blue Origin's new Shepard. However, given the recent setbacks, this endeavor may face the same challenges. Space Pioneer has also faced setbacks, with a striking example being the failed test of its Tianlong-3 rocket. During a static fire test, the rocket unexpectedly lifted off from the launch pad before crashing and exploding about one and a half kilometers away. Thankfully, there were no reported injuries. The Tianlong-3 bears a strong resemblance to SpaceX's Falcon 9, with nine engines in the booster powered by liquid oxygen and kerosene. Its specs include a height of 71 meters, a diameter of 3.8 meters, and a thrust of 770 tons. It features two stages, landing legs and grid fins, clear markers of SpaceX's influence. However, without a deep grasp of the underlying technology, these similarities led to failure, disrupting Space Pioneer's subsequent plans. Likewise, iSpace encountered trouble with its Hyperbola 1 rocket in July, leading to an in-flight loss of its payload. These recurring failures underscore that imitation alone cannot drive progress. For now, SpaceX remains unmatched due to its technological depth and innovative lead. But despite setbacks, it seems China's private space sector hasn't abandoned its strategy of emulating SpaceX and may even be ramping up its efforts. For instance, while Cosmoleap envisions an offshore rocket-catching tower, CAS Space is pursuing international ambitions with its Connecticut rockets. Since 2022, the Connecticut 1 has completed multiple successful launches, and the company now aims to debut the Connecticut 2 in September next year, planning 5 to 8 launches per year. Each mission could deliver up to 12 tons to low Earth orbit and 7.8 tons to sun-synchronous orbit. By late 2026, CAS Space hopes to make Connecticut reusable for Tiangong supply runs and introduce a suborbital launch system in 2027. Liu Weipeng, a manager at CAS Space, has emphasized the company's vision of establishing a robust and competitive launch market in China by attracting international clients. Although this will undoubtedly be challenging, he views it as a key opportunity, especially given the many potential partners they claim to have found globally. Their next planned launches could even carry payloads from various countries. 
However, competing with SpaceX, a company with a proven record of reliability and efficiency, will be exceptionally challenging for Kaz Space. SpaceX's Falcon rockets and soon Starship continue to dominate the international launch market, earning the trust of NASA, the U.S. government, and a multitude of private and foreign organizations, including Europe, Japan, and South Korea. With ongoing technical and financial hurdles, it remains to be seen whether Kaz Space's ambitions will materialize or falter. SpaceX's strides in reusable technology are transforming the landscape of the global space race. Each successful mission forces other space agencies and companies to rethink their strategies, speeding up timelines and pushing for innovations. China's response with Cosmoleap alongside other private ventures underscores how seriously they're taking the challenge. But while imitation is flattering, it also reveals how far behind the rest of the world still is. As long as SpaceX continues to lead in both reliability and frequency of launches, it remains the standard to beat, whether for lunar missions or Mars colonization. Stay tuned to see what the future holds for this ambitious venture. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.